guys, welcome back to At The Table and welcome to 2021. So a lot of times when we start a new year, we start to set new goals, new resolutions for ourselves. And one of the most popular things that we, um, we see is that people have a new goal of eating healthier. So today I just wanted to give a little bit of background on our MyPlate and some of the things that we promote here at the Cooperative Extension Office. Now at the Extension Office, everything that we promote is um, science-based, research-based, so you can be confident in what we are telling you. Um, and what we use as a guide at the Cooperative Extension Office is the MyPlate. And so MyPlate is a national guideline. It's been around since 2010 that just shows you what your plate should look like at each meal. So you can see here, half of our plate should be made up of fruits and vegetables. And then the other half of our plate should be made up of healthier, leaner proteins and whole grains preferred. We really wanna aim for at least half of our grains to be a whole grain. So really, if we start to make our plate look like this, um, we are gonna be living a healthy life and hopefully feeling good, looking good and getting meeting those resolutions and goals for 2021. You also see a section for dairy up here. Um, dairy, we typically only have about two ounces of that, an ounce to two ounces um, at a meal. So we don't typically have a whole serving of, uh, or sorry, a whole lot of dairy, a whole plate full of dairy, right? Unless you're having something like a cheese board or um, a pizza, but those don't typically fit onto our my plate. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about this at the end as well, but this is kind of going to be the basis of today's episode is the my plate, and everything that we're making today fits onto this my plate. So I'll go through and show you guys how we are making a meal work um, to fit into our my plate. So what we are actually making is let's see if, there we go is a um, sesame ginger salmon salad. And we're gonna start with our salmon. So we're just gonna broil this in the oven for about eight to 10 minutes on high. I have my salmon here. I got some really nice salmon from Feedline yesterday that was on sale. Um, and what I like to do with my salmon is to go ahead and put it into a Ziploc bag. I usually add some type of acid. So this time I added um, a rice, rice vinegar. And then I also added a little bit of soy sauce and prefer that to be the low sodium soy sauce or reduced sodium um, because soy sauce can tend to have a lot of sodium in it. And then I also added a little bit of ground ginger and garlic powder and a little bit of salt and pepper as well. So pretty simple. You want to let that sit for about or at, at most 30 minutes. With fish, um, if you let it sit for longer than 30 minutes, it can start to actually kind of eat that and eat that flesh away. So it'll start to kind of fall apart um, and it won't be as tender. So you wanna make sure you're not over marinating your fish. It's not as strong as something like your beef, your pork or your chicken. Um, it's a lot more delicate. So we don't want to over marinate our fish. So we're gonna throw this into the oven just for about eight to 10 minutes. And I'm gonna put that on the bottom shelf of my oven. I do have it on broil, um, so it is very hot and I do not want it to scorch my fish. So the next thing we're gonna be doing is making our dressing. So um, this is a really easy recipe. There's not a whole lot to it, but I'm actually gonna be doing half the recipe here instead of the whole thing, just because we don't have quite as much um, cabbage or base as our, for our salad as the recipe calls for. So we are gonna be using rice, um, rice vinegar as kind of our, our acid. Whenever we make a dressing, we want to have, um, you have your acid, your oil, and then your seasoning. So I'll kind of walk you through those today. So we're, like I said, we're doing half. So we're just gonna do two tablespoons of this rice vinegar. And then we are gonna do a little bit of soy sauce, or sorry, um, olive oil. We are gonna do one tablespoon of olive oil. And when we're doing our, um, when we're talking about our my plate, we wanna make sure that we are choosing fats that are unsaturated fats, um, not super heavy, and 
anything that is going to be liquid at room temperature fits into that category. So these are what we call more of our heart healthy fats um, versus saturated fats, which do tend to be more of our unhealthy um, options. So we are going to just do a tablespoon of that. And then we have, we're going to do one tablespoon of soy sauce. And like I said, try to find the reduced sodium. Um, now, even the reduced sodium will be pretty high in sodium. Um, so still be mindful when you are using that. All right, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of honey. A trick for you is if you actually put a little bit of oil in your tablespoon or teaspoon before you add anything like honey that might stick, it will help it to not stick to your um, measuring utensil. So it helps it to kind of slide out more easily. That way you don't have a whole lot of stuff stuck to the bottom of your measuring utensil. So we'll see you guys back in just a second. We'll finish up this dressing and then we'll scoot on over to our salad. Introducing the Star Communications app. All the tools you need in one convenient location. You can access Watch TV everywhere. Check local channel lineup. Check your Star email. View and pay your Star bill. Report troubles. Use your Star security app. Check your home voicemail. Sign up for CrowdFiber. Check your Wi-Fi speed. The list keeps going and going. Download for free from the App Store or Google Play. All right, we took a little break between our dressing because our salmon is done. So the best way to know if your any meat that you're making is done is to use a handy dandy thermometer. You hear me say this all the time, but use that digital thermometer. And for our um, fish or seafood, we want it to be at 145. So if you actually just take the probe, stick it right in the thickest part and wait till it gets where at 148 continuing to climb. So um, we are good here. We had this on broil for um, about 10 minutes. So if you are using your oven, you want to make sure that um, you can also do this in a pan on your stovetop as well. But if you're using your oven, you just want to make sure um, that your oven is heated pretty well before you put that fish in. That way it'll only take you about 10 minutes. Otherwise, it can take a little bit longer. So that looks good. Smells good. We're excited to try this later. I'm going to go ahead and scoot this out of our way and then we'll finish our dressing. All right, so with our dressing, we have already added our um, soy sauce, vinegar, um, our uh, olive oil, and honey. So we have three more things to add. Um, this, this next one we're gonna do is sesame oil. Now, this is not something you may have in your pantry. If you don't have it, perfectly okay, don't worry about it. You could also toast some sesame seeds, which we're gonna be doing anyways to add to our salad but you could toast those and throw it in with your dressing to give it a little bit of flavor if you don't have the sesame oil. Um, it's really easy to find, it's in most grocery stores, um, but again, if you're just making this spur of the moment, um, don't worry if, if you don't have this available. So we're doing one tablespoon of that. And remember I said I'm only doing half of our recipe. So if you want to, you could double this and make a bigger batch. And then we're gonna do one, um, actually half of a teaspoon of ginger. You could go a little bit stronger if you like more of that ginger flavor. And then the next thing is a clove of garlic. The recipe actually calls for one clove and y'all know I love my garlic. So we're gonna use that whole clove even if we're doing half of the recipe. And I have just um, a garlic press here. You can absolutely chop that garlic up. You can use another handy device that you may have, um, just whatever you have on hand. It doesn't have to be real complicated. And that is it. And I love to put our um, any of my dressings in a, a little mason jar and just shake it up. Makes it really easy to kind of emulsify if you have different ingredients in there. For instance, honey, um, you wanna make sure that that gets shaken up and blended really well. If you are not doing um, something like that that needs, it might not be as big of a deal to use a jar, but a jar is just the easiest way to really get that honey spread throughout um, for it to kind of 
dissipate a little bit into the rest of the ingredients. When I whisk, I feel like I still miss some of that honey. It's just like kind of globbed at the bottom. So looks good. We'll add that to our um, dressing in just a little bit. So we're gonna scoot on over to that next. And um, this is pretty easy. We just have a few ingredients we're gonna be chopping up. Um, and I switched up the recipe a little bit. Our recipe actually called for Napa cabbage and a red cabbage. Um, so you would just buy a head of each of those and, and chop it up um, all together. I cheated, I just bought the little bag that had everything blended in. So this is actually a green cabbage, a red cabbage and shredded carrots already mixed together. You can do it this however you want to. So if you're short on time or if you don't wanna put a whole lot of work into that, you can just buy you know, the pre-made uh, shredded cabbage bag. Or if you wanna save a little bit of money and have that go stretch a little bit further, typically when we buy those fresh vegetables and chop them and prepare them ourselves, it does save us a little bit of money and you get more out of it. So for this, um, if you were to do that whole head of Napa cabbage and a whole head of red cabbage, it would probably be well over this whole bowl full. So you would have a lot, a lot more cabbage available to you. So just keep that in mind. That's why I said we're only doing half the recipe because we don't have quite as much um, to work with here. So the first thing that I'm gonna add is a little bit more carrots. Again, I cheated and bought the, the matchstick shredded carrots already. Um, this was actually something I had left over in my fridge from another recipe. So you could leave these just as they are, or you could chop them up even more. I'm gonna do about a quarter of a cup of these and just chop them up a little bit more. If y'all have watched any of my other videos, you know that I love stuff in little bite-sized pieces because it kinda blends all together in whatever meal we are eating. Stretches further, goes further, and I just feel like I get a little bit of every, of all the foods in every bite. So I'm just chopping those up a little bit more and we're gonna throw those in. All right, so we've got that done. We'll see you guys back in just one second and I'll have the rest of our vegetables prepared. Damn, please. Keep life exciting, even when it's not. Watch TV everywhere from Star Communications. All right, so we've got our carrots mixed with our shredded cabbage. Um, next thing I'm gonna add is some green onions. So I just have two sprigs here of green onions and we are gonna chop those up. Now remember, when you are um, chopping any of your vegetables, you wanna use a nice, um, chef's knife that is about eight inches and make sure that we are holding that in nice and firmly closer to the blade here. Um, and then you just wanna have that full control. Do your rocking motion. And it makes it a lot easier to chop that way. And if you're new to preparing a lot of fresh vegetables like this, start slow. So you don't, you know, this isn't even, super fast, but when I first started, I couldn't go this fast with a knife. So um, start slow and just build up that confidence in the kitchen. When we build up our confidence in the kitchen, it helps us to um, want to spend more time there. And it kind of encourages us to cook more meals at home. So keep practicing, keep it up. You will get there the more that you, you um, work in the kitchen a little bit. And I'm actually doing a no-no. You're not supposed to drag your blade across the cutting board. I still find myself doing it every now and then. But you should try to turn that knife over and drag it the opposite way. Um, that way it won't dull your knife. I tend to sharpen my knife every single time before we actually cook, just because I like a really, really sharp knife. So um, just keep that in mind if you don't have a knife sharpener at home. And here you can see that I went to almost where the green stops on our green onion. Um, you could go further. You can actually eat that entire part, but just for the purposes of our salad, 
and even this is starting to make my eyes water a little bit, um, you don't wanna go much further than that because that whiter part tastes similar to a diced white onion. All right, so next we have our red bell pepper. So a trick for our bell pepper is I always cut the top off. You want to get past that green part. Um, and then if you actually just turn it, a friend of mine showed me this and I've started cutting my peppers this way. Slowly turn it and just cut it where those little grooves are. Then you reduce the amount of seeds you're getting. And then you can actually even cut off the bottom. So we have just our seed pod there and we don't have a ton of seeds with, uh, mixed within our pepper either. If you do have any that are just little rogue seeds, you can just um, move those and throw them to the side. Now we have the rest of our pepper to work with. So you could leave this into strips or you could do it in um, diced. You already know my preference because I like little pieces, right? So I'm just gonna cut it up and dice it all the way through. If you like bigger chunks of, of bell pepper in your food, then you could absolutely just do it um, in those large strips. And as far as the top goes, you just take it and you push um, through the bottom, push it out and it pops right out and then you've got the rest of that pepper to work with. So it's up to you. Um, I'm probably only gonna do half of this bell pepper. So you can do as much or as little as you like and save the rest of it for something else. Now, another tip for you is if you are, um, say you're doing something like this and you're only gonna use half of the pepper for one recipe, go ahead and chop it up and put it in a little container or a, a baggie in your refrigerator. And that way, um, it's easy, quick and easy to add to other stuff. So for example, if you're making breakfast and you're making eggs, you could add that red bell pepper to that. You could throw it in spaghetti. Um, really bell pepper is a good one to go in most foods. It's pretty versatile. So go ahead and if you're already chopping and preparing, if you've already got that cutting board out, you've already got your knife out, go ahead and chop up all of it to reduce the amount of time you have to spend in the kitchen later on. All right, so that is all done. We only have a few more ingredients left, but we're gonna take a quick break and then we'll see you back in just a second to finish those up. After completing my contract, I still have to buy out of it. Come on, here's your sign. Switch to the sign that's keeping homes secure and customers happy all over the area. Security from Star Communications. We pride ourselves on fair pricing and quick, friendly service every time. Somebody try to break into this place? Security from Star Communications. All right, so we're back finishing up our salad. So our next ingredient is an avocado. Um, a good way to know if an avocado is ripe is actually to look at the very top, that little top stem. This one has actually popped off while I was rinsing it off. Um, but a good way to know, that's almost like a ticker. So as it starts to get really ripe, um, it will almost push that, that top stem out. Um, another way is just to feel it. And if it kind of gives a little bit as you put your thumb in, then it's likely ripe. So for this, you wanna be very careful. There is a seed in the middle. So what I like to do is just work the avocado around. And I mentioned that I rinsed my avocado before I used it. Um, even though we don't eat the outside of the avocado, there you are still cutting into it. So anything you're cutting from the outside is going to the inside. And you think about all the people touching the avocado and trying to find the ripest one, um, or maybe a not so ripe one because they have something else they're gonna do with it. But just keep that in mind. You will still want to make sure you're rinsing even the, the fruits, technically a fruit, the fruits and vegetables that uh, you may not even eat the outside. 
So I just go with the back of a knife and I slowly start to kind of make little grooves in there. And then I just take a spoon, a nice big spoon and work it on out. And it looks all pretty. You can make it look nice when you're displaying that. So we're just gonna use half. Another trick for you is to take the, um, the opposite end of your avocado, still with the skin, there's nothing in there, but it will actually help to keep that inner part um, fresher for longer. Once it's exposed to oxygen, it starts to kind of uh, dwindle down a little bit. And I have some sesame seeds over here. I started smelling them a little bit, so I was like, I should probably go ahead and move those around. These do get burnt really fast. So I just have them on a dry, um, a dry pan. You don't put any oil in there at all. And you just throw them in, put them on medium to low heat and just slowly start to move them around. Once they start to get a little bit of that golden brown color, they are done. They're really easy to burn. So similar to nuts, if you're ever kind of roasting nuts in a pan, um, they burn really quickly. So you do have to just keep an eye on those um, to make sure that they're not getting burnt. So we're just gonna drizzle this over. And really the sesame seeds make it, so I definitely recommend you add those to it. So the next thing I'm gonna add is some rice. Um, this is brown rice that I already had made up. So if you have any leftover rice, this is a great recipe to use it on. And this covers our whole grain part. So I talked about making sure that we have whole grains. Using brown rice helps to check that, um, check that box. So we have our grains included. Next up, we've got some mandarin oranges. So I just like to buy the kind um, in the can. Of course, you can't really find those fresh around here anyways. Um, but if you're buying these, make sure that you are getting the ones that are in 100% juice. So don't buy the ones that are packed in light syrup or, or heavy syrup. Get the ones that say in 100% juice. Um, you can see it right on the front of the, the label that it says that. So read your labels. It will make a difference when you're shopping. All right, and our last ingredient is our sugar snap peas. I love these as a snack. So they, to me, they just are a little bit sweet. Um, but give you a good crunch. They're really good with like hummus or any type of dip if you like that for a snack. We're just gonna throw those on the side. And add in our dressing. So I'm gonna move this to our center here. And you can just see how pretty, we've got so many different colors, um, textures. You guys know I'm all about texture. So we've got some crunch, we've got the avocado that has the nice fats in there. Got our mandarin oranges that have a lot of the, that sweet flavor, bell pepper, green onion. We've just got it all covered. So then we are gonna add our dressing and pour that all over. A good thing with this recipe, if you don't want to eat it all at once, um, you can actually just make the cabbage, the sesame seeds, and even the rice, um, throw your dressing in and toss it all together and then just add your extra ingredients as you go. But the cabbage itself with the dressing will last several days in the refrigerator. So you could make this ahead of time and it would be good to go um, for the week. So then we're just gonna toss it all together. And it smells so good. I will say the sesame oil does give it kind of a nuttier flavor. So if you're missing that, that is why I recommend um, definitely doing the uh, sesame seeds. But the sesame oil does, I can smell the sesame oil and the kind of the nuttiness from that. So we just toss it. And then you can put it in your bowl and divide it up and add your salmon on top and you're good to go. So this is a really good tasty salad um, that you have. It covers all of those food groups that we're talking about. So if we're looking back at our My Plate, we are loaded with vegetables. We probably have more than half of our plate here loaded with those vegetables and the fruits. 
our avocado and our mandarin oranges go in that fruit category. Our protein is the salmon, so it's good to have a fatty fish um, one to two times a week. Your fatty fish gives you those really good omegas that we don't get in a lot of our other foods. So um, a, lean, a lean meat or a fatty piece of fish is, is a good option. Um, grains, we have our brown rice. And then we don't have any dairy with this recipe, but you could absolutely have a side of milk or you could throw um, feta cheese might be good in this. Really, I don't see a lot of cheeses kind of fitting into this food, but you could fit that in in other parts of your day. Um, but this is an easy way to get your, get your My Plate meal in. Really tasty, really healthy for you. Start with this if you're trying to find ways to eat healthier and you will be on the right track for the new year.